action we're going to talk about bond energy calculate bond energy for methane define what we know to be heat of formation talk about the law of conservation of energy define hess's law calculate both heat of reaction and heat of formation now when we talk about bond energy we know in any given reaction bonds are made and bonds are broken for bonds to be made bonds have to be initially broken so on the left hand side of this reaction our bonds would be broken whilst on the right hand side our bonds are made so we require energy to break a bond and we release energy when a bond is formed so the energy involved in breaking the bonds is called our bond energy very simple the definition given for bond energy is the average very important that we discuss this um, later on the average energy required to one mole of a particular covalent bond now guys as you can see covalent bond is referenced here it does not apply to ionic bonds in this case and to separate the neutral atoms completely from each other the one mole is the given standard of measurement in this case so if we look at bond energy, on the left hand side, there's various um, examples of different bond energies. Okay, so the average energy required to break a given bond. As you can imagine, the carbonyl, the C double bond O down the bottom left, there is the highest bond energy. So where do they obtain this? Well, what they do is they would study various spectra of molecules and the heats of reaction, which is also known as delta H. The average energy is important here because the bond energy can vary slightly for a particular bond. If we look at the bond energy for carbon to hydrogen or the bond energy in methane, we're going to see that now. So, bond energy in the combustion of methane. So the first thing we need to realize is there are four carbon to hydrogen bonds in methane. The energy required to break that first carbon to hydrogen bond is not the same as the energy required to break the other carbon to hydrogen bonds. As you can see, there are four different values and the average bond energy is obtained. So in this case, they do it for breaking bond um, carbon to hydrogen one, two, three, then four. And they would average the results of that to get the average bond energy. Whilst with the heat of formation, this is the heat change. It's the total heat change that takes place when one mole of a compound, again, one mole being our standard measurement, in its standard state is formed from elements in their standard states. Now, standard states, what does that mean? That is important to note that it, what you would find, for example, um, water naturally in the world. So, for example, it would be H2O with an L beside it. So, standard states is an element or compound's normal form at 25 degrees Celsius and 101 kilopascals. Remember, please be aware that this is not STP. It's not standard temperature and pressure. It's the element's most natural form or normal form at 25 degrees and 101 kilopascals. So for example, if we go back again to water, it is in its liquid form at 25 degrees and 101 kilopascals, whereas oxygen O2 at 25 degrees and 101 kilopascals would be in its gaseous state. And this would be given as a little G down the bottom right hand side. So have a look here. The heat of formation of water, we've got three equations. Which one would you think is the actual equation. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the equation is balanced. We also need to make sure that our state symbols, so as you can see beside the two H2, there's a little g, we need to make sure that these little symbols are equivalent to the standard state at 25 degrees and 101 kilopascals. So in this case, we know it cannot be equation one. Why? Because it would have water in a gaseous state at 25 degrees. The same for equation two, it cannot be this one. Because again, it would have H2O in its gaseous state. We know at 25 degrees, it's in its liquid state. Therefore, the heat of formation of water would have to be equation three. 
So the delta H in that case would be negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole. Whilst if you look at Hess's law, or Hess law, if a chemical reaction takes place in a number of stages, the sum of heat changes in the separate stages is equal to the heat change if the reaction is carried out in one stage. That basically means that if you go from A plus B to give you C, the equivalent of that would be A plus B plus C would give you D. If, it's, if it happens in several stages, we'd actually add each heat change together to get the complete heat change. We know the law of conservation of energy. Guys, this shouldn't be new to you. This should be coming from your junior cert um, education. So energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but only converted from one form of energy to another. Okay, so energy cannot be created or destroyed. Energy comes does not come from nothing. It's potential energy, it's kinetic energy. Um, we've seen it in our basic physics, in Sankey diagrams, going from the potential energy of a battery and it being broken into various parts. For example, light, heat, sound energy. So it's just changed from one form to another. We need to talk about how to calculate the heat of formation. This comes up most times in the Leaving Cert examination and it looks harder than it is. It takes a while to get our heads around it, but it's not as bad as you'd think it would be. So, if you were asked to calculate the heat of formation in a question, you will be given several equations okay so it says calculate the heat formation of methane from the following data so a b and c are the three equations given there and you want to calculate the formation of methane note in each of these reactions they are given in the heat of combustion now we may need to reverse one or two of these equations. If you're forming methane, that means that your CH4 should be on the right hand side. So if you note in C, we may need to flip that equation. How do we do this? Well, we'll take it in a four step um, method. Number one, you write down the equation that you're looking for. So in this case, we'd have to write down the formation of methane. Then you write down what equations were given and you rearrange them. So again, as I was talking about, flipping them. Make sure that the products are on the side you need and the reactants are on the side you need. And then you'd cancel off the products and the reactants in the rearranged equation and that will give you what you want. Now, I'll go through an example of this just to make that a little bit more easy to understand. So take your time with this. Watch the video twice or three times to understand what's going on. So the first thing we want is the equation for the formation of methane. We don't know what its heat of formation is. That's what the question's asking for. So we know that carbon plus 2H2 gives us CH4. That's a given. That is the formation of methane. Part two, we write down the equations that are given. So these were given at the beginning and you're already starting to pick up that your methane on the third equation is on the wrong side. So we're going to have to flip that and I'll show you now in the next one how to do that. So we've rearranged the equations given so the reactants that you want are on the side they need it. So the top is the reaction of formation of methane. That's the equation we wrote out in step one. Step two, as you can see here, is the second um, set of equations. Notice that I've blocked the CH4 in red and it's telling you that it's on the wrong side. So we flip that equation. 
Note, very important, if you flip that equation, you have to change the sign. So delta H in this case would go from negative 879 kilojoules per mole. Once flipped, it becomes positive 879 kilojoules per mole. So we're going to take the bottom three equations and we're going to start cancelling out what we don't need. So let's have a look here. Again, we are looking for the very top equation. So we're going to take our three equations here and we're going to note that O2 on the left hand side in the first one can be cancelled out with one of the O2s on the bottom right hand side. The second O2 cancelled out with the other O2. So that's the two red marks or the red slashes on the left hand side are cancelling out with the two oxygens with the red line through it on the right hand side. Now that's oxygen dealt with. Next up, CO2 with the yellow line through it, that will cancel out with the CO2 on the left hand side down the bottom. So that's our CO2's gone. And again, our two H2O on our right hand side, with the green line through it, is cancelled out with the two H2O on the left hand side. Now that leaves us with our yellow box, our carbon, our green box, our 2H2 and our red box, our methane. So you take those three numbers and you add them together. So when you sit down and you add them together, your delta H will be negative 86 kilojoules per mole. Now guys, this is just like rearranging an algebraic equation. If you allowed the arrows to be an equal sign, and if you brought them both together, you would actually rearrange the equation to get what you wanted at the top. The C plus 2H2 gives you CH4. So it's very simple, but you have to go through each of the four steps every time. Okay, it makes life so much easier every time. You write out what you want. You write down the three equations or how many equations that was given to you. You then note are your products and reactants on the right side of where they should be. If not, you've got to flip that equation. If you flip the equation, you need to change the sign on the delta H. You then cancel out what is not required until you have your equation, which is the heat of formation. Now, on to calculating heat of reaction. So we've just looked at heat of formation. We're now going to look at heat of reaction. So, calculate the heat of reaction of the following. So you have 2H2S plus SO2 to give you 3S plus H2O. And delta H is what we're looking for here. You're given the three equations. Again, in this case, there's three. You've got to think about which ones are on which side and do you need to flip anything. So take a minute. Just check if there's anything there that you think you need to flip. Write down the equation that you're looking for. Write down the equations given. Rearrange. Cancel reactants and products until you get what you want. So what we have, what we're given. I know for a fact that number one, equation number one, has got to, got to be flipped. Step three, rearrange. Noticing here that equation one. The sulfur is on the wrong side and equation two, the sulfur is on the wrong side. So we've got to change those over. Now, something very interesting that we haven't come across just yet. Are your equations balanced? Do you need to multiply anything by anything? So let's start with equation one. H2 plus S gives you H2S. We're going to start that off and we're going to flip it. 
Okay, the first thing we've done is flip it. We'll also notice that in the equation that we are looking for, it's 2H2S. So that means that we're going to have to multiply that whole equation by 2. So we flipped it and we now multiply it by 2. So that will give us 2H2S going to 2S plus 2H2. Notice it goes from negative 21 kilojoules per mole to positive because we flipped it. Multiply by 2 to give us our 42. That's that equation done perfectly. Our next equation. Equation number 2. Our sulphur plus our oxygen gives us SO2. Again, our sulphur is on the wrong side. So we're going to flip that equation. So if we come down, that gives us SO2 going to O2 plus S gone from negative 297 to positive 297 and our last equation note we have a problem here because there's only one h2o but in our equation that we are looking for we want two h2o so we multiply everything in that equation by two so our delta h goes from negative 286 to negative 572. In no case here, we didn't have to flip the last one. Now, finally, step four, cancel what we don't need. So you can see the hydrogens are canceled with the green line going through it. The oxygens are canceled with the red lines going through it. You bring them both together. So plus 42 plus 297, negative 286, will give us a delta H of plus 53. You have to begin at the beginning and start by writing each step out. That's the best way for you to understand this. So for that now, we've talked about bond energy. We've looked at the bond energies in methane. We've looked at heat of formation, the law of conservation of energy. Talked about Hess's law. We've calculated both heat of reaction and heat of formation.